It's bond. Bonds payable. Yan ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon dito sa ating session about bonds payable. Kala nyo kung sino na, no? Piling James Bond. Ginamit ko kasi yung, ano, yung uh, bagong bili kong gel. Tsaka itong, ano, itong uh, Mercano ko. Medyo matagal-tagal na rin ako. Hindi, hindi ko nagagamit. Kasi uh, wala mga question ngayon. So, <laughs> dito ko na lang ginamit. Normally, I, I use this since uh, Toastmasters. No? Because I'm one of the members of the uh, Toastmasters International. Incidentally, bago tayo mag... Uh, Mag-proceed dun sa ating, ano, dun sa ating uh, session for today about bonds payable. No? Gusto ko muna mag-shoutout kay uh, Manel Ramos. Hi there! So, let's uh, proceed now dito sa bonds payable. Na isa sa mga, ano, isa sa mga pinaka... Um, hindi ko alam kung paborito ng estudyante or medyo na challenge sila. No? Pero nung ako yung nag-aaral sa college, no? Actually... Pagka, ano, pagka medyo naboboard ako, pinagali. Ito, ito yung sinusold ko madalas eh. Dito ako na-challenge eh. No? Ito, dito talaga, ano, dito, dito lumalabas yung, yung ano ko eh. Yung, yung, yung angking palino ko eh. Pagka, pagka itong mga ganitong bonds payable. No? Wala pa ako naintindihan nung araw about bonds payable. No? Pero dito ko talaga ano eh. No? Dito, ito yung dito ko nag-concentrate. No? Especially nung magsisipay board exam na. So, alam ko, kayang-kaya mo rin ito. So, without much ado, let's proceed now. So, the uh, definition of a bond is that it is a formal unconditional promise made under seal to pay a specified sum of money at a determinable future date and to make periodic interest payment at a stated rate until the principal sum is paid. So in simple language, a bond is a contract of debt whereby one party called the issuer borrows funds from another party called the investor. Normally, pagka nangangailangan yung, uh, yung company, no? typically mga korporasyon ng, uh, ng pondo, Pwede silang mag-issue ng bonds instead of uh, yung, uh, yung, yung mga stocks. So, meron silang option no? other than yung sa, sa, sa stocks. Pwede silang mag-issue ng bonds. But this time, they're on the side of the uh, borrower. So, dalawa yung parties dito. Yung isa, yung issuer or yung borrower. And the other one is yung investor o yung bond holder. So a bond is evidenced by a certificate and a contractual agreement between the issuer and the investor and is contained in a document known as bond indenture. So term and serial bonds. No? So term bonds, ito yung mga bonds with a single date of maturity. Uh, term bonds may require the issuing entity to establish a sinking fund. Kumbaga meron silang pondo. Para to provide yung, yung uh, money, yung pambayad, no? para, para i-retire yung bond issue at one time. Yung serial bonds naman, these are bonds with a series of maturity dates instead of one single payment. So in other words, serial bonds allow the issuing entity to retire the bonds by installments. So, ito so, typically yung serial bonds, yung nagbibigay sila dito ng, uh, ng payment, no? e, uh, periodically, that could be every 6 months or even a year, yung bang may ano, kasama na yung principal doon sa, sa pagbayad nila alongside the interest. So, we also have secured and unsecured bonds. So, tignan naman natin kung ano yung, ano, yung uh, itong, uh, secured and unsecured bonds. So, mortgage bonds are bonds secured by a mortgage on real properties. Ito yung sinasanla nila, yung, ito yung naka, ano, nakasanla yung property nila. So, naka-mortgage ito 
or collateral trust bonds or bonds secured by shares and bonds of other corporations. So, ito yung mga secured bonds, no? And yung isa naman, yung, yung last one is yung debenture bonds which are unsecured or bonds without collateral. So, ito, hindi siya, no? Kumbaga, itong uh, debenture bonds, ito yung tinatawag ng mga unsecured bonds kasi wala silang collateral. Now, looking here at the initial measurement of bonds payable, PFRS paragraph 5.1.1 provides that bonds payable not designated on fair value through profit or loss shall be measured initially at fair value minus transaction costs that are directly attributable to the, to the issue of the bonds. So, the fair value of the bonds payable is equal to the present value. No? Parang yung sa notes payable of future cash payments to settle the bonds liab the bond liability. And yung bond issue cost naman shall be deducted from the fair value or issue price of the bonds in measuring initially the bonds payable. So, deductible itong bond issue cost na to from the fair value or issue price ng bonds payable. However, if the bonds are designated and accounted for at fair value through profit or loss, the bond issue costs are treated as expense immediately. And so, i-expense natin siya. No? If uh, the fair value, if uh, the bonds are designated and accounted for at fair value through profit or loss. So actually, the, the fair value of the bonds payable is the same as the issue price or the net proceeds yung pera na nakuha nila no? from the issue of the bonds excluding accrued interest. So yun, yun yung fair value. So mamaya, gagawin natin yung mga accounting accounting nito, no? accounting uh, transactions. Now, Subsequent measurements of bonds payable, PFRS paragraph 5.3.1 provides that after initial recognition, bonds payable shall be measured either at amortized cost using the effective interest method and at fair value through profit or loss. The amortized portion of the bonds payable is the amount in which the bond liability is measured initially minus principal repayment plus or minus the amortization or the cumulative amortization using the effective interest method of any difference between the face amount and the, the present value of the bond payable. Actually, itong, uh, itong difference between yung plus or minus between the difference yung ng, ano, ng uh, face amount at yung, uh, yung, yung present value is either the premium or discount in bonds payable. So we can now proceed to accounting for issuance of bonds. So there are two approaches in accounting for the authorization and issuance of bonds so namely memorandum eh, memorandum approach and yung journal entry method so parang ano to parang basic accounting meron o yung sa ano pala yung dito sa na sa corporation na accounting for corporation no? may memorandum approach sa yung journal entry approach so having this illustration on january 1 2020 an entity is authorized to issue 10 year 12% bonds with fees amount of 5 million pesos. Interest payable is January 1 and July 1. So take note of yung interest payment dito sa, sa bonds payable. No? Consisting of 5,000 units of 1,000 fees amount. So multiply mo lang yung 5,000 units with 1,000 1, fees amount. That would give you uh, 5 million. So wala itong, ano, wala itong premium or or discount because kung ano yung face amount niya 
ganun rin yung ano yung uh, yung face value so yung yung present value so in other words yung uh, percentage na nag-appear dun sa bonds na no, is the same as the uh, imputed interest or yung effective interest so the bonds are sold at fixed amount to an underwriter okay underwriter is a parang broker ito no Okay, so memorandum approach to the following memorandum entry is made in the general journal and a notation of the amount authorized. So on January 1, ito yung sa memorandum, no? gagawa lang tayo ng memorandum approach no? or a memorandum, uh, parang notation lang to, no? So lalagay lang natin, describe lang natin yung nangyari. No? So on January 1, 2020, the entity is authorized to issue 5 million face amount of 10-year 12% bonds interest payable January 1 in July consisting of 5,000 units of 1,000 face 1,000 peso face amount ayan so dinescribe lang natin kung ano yung ano yung, kung ano yung, uh, yung transaction na nangyari now in recording the sale of the bonds at face amounts uh, of course yung uh, yung issuer ng bonds makakatanggap siya ng cash for 5 million and magi recognize siya ng, uh, ng corresponding bonds payable at face value which is also the present va pa value equal to present value of the, uh, the bonds payable of 5 million no? so in this in this um, in this uh, entry the memorandum approach of accounting for bonds will be employed no sa mga ano, sa, um, now as this is the one generally followed. So ito yung ginagamit madalas. Now magpunta naman tayo doon sa no sa sa journal entry approach. So yung difference between the two yung sa memorandum sa kadun sa sa journal entry to record the authorization of the bonds. So debit and issued bonds payable. So simil this is similar sa no sa corporation no. So, nagde-debit tayo ng unissued. Yun nga lang ito, bonds payable. So, unissued bonds payable, naka-debit naka siya, no, kasi hindi pa siya ini-issue. And credit authorized bonds payable. So, this is like similar dun sa, sa accounting for corporation. No? Pagka, nag, pagka nag, na authorize ka ng bonds, dun naman sa corporation, pagka in ka, mag-issue ng, uh, ng stocks or ng shares. Now, to record the sale of the bonds of at face value, we will see the difference between sa memorandum approach and dun sa journal entry. Ang difference nila is that yung bonds payable na ginamit dun sa memorandum approach, no, dito naman sa journal entry approach, ang ginamit naman natin is an issued bonds payable because we have a previously um, recorded an issued bonds of 5 million. So, Kanina naka-debit ngayon naman credit natin lahat nung natanggap na natin yung pera. So let's go now when the bonds are issued at a premium. So yung kanina, yung bonds is uh, no, yung bang face amount ng bonds saka yung present value pareho kaya 5 million. Ngayon naman, paano naman kung uh, kung mas mataas yung uh, yung cash price na na-receive nung issuer kaysa doon sa ano doon sa Doon sa initial na doon sa face amount ng bonds. So halimbawa, 5 million lang yung ano, yung uh, face amount ng bonds, no? Pero binigyan siya ng 5 million 250 pesos yung ano, yung issuer. So that is said to be issued at a premium. Now, merong mga ano, merong mga instances bakit uh, mas malaki na tinatanggap niya kaysa doon sa doon sa face amount, no? Maring uh, ano siya, kumbaga meron na siyang uh, na-establish na yung kanyang uh, uh, credit standing, no? Maganda yung credit standing niya. So, for example, an entity issued bonds with fees amount of 5 million pesos at 105. So, yung uh, issue price is 105, no? The quoted price of 105 minus 100 means 105% of the face amount of the bonds. Thus, the sales price is 5,250,000 pesos. So, computed by multiplying 
yung bang 5 million pesos times 1.05 or 105%. So yung journal entry, yung cash will uh, will be uh, will be recognized yung buong uh, yung buong proceeds no yung cash proceeds of 5 million 250,000. Okay, so we know that no pagka cash at face face amount kung ano yung kumagkano yung binigay no. And yung credit naman bonds at its ano uh, yung bang face amount niya which is 5 million no. So bonds payable 5 million and yung credit yung yung balancing difference no is 250,000 should be credited sa premium on bonds payable no. Parang karagdagan nito dun sa no dun sa 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 bonds sa bond payable no. So kini credit rin siya. Similar to ano crediting yung yung uh, yung sa corporation naman pagka nag issue tayo ng ano ng uh, ng shares no. Meron rin dong ano yung bang premium on shares no. Now the bond premium is in effect again on the part of the issuing entity because it receives more than what it is obligated to pay under the terms of the bond issue. No, kumbaga gain sa kanya yun dahil maganda yung kanyang credit standing, no? Or maganda, magan, well, sig, ano na siya, yung bang uh, established na, no? Established uh, payer, no? Um, the bond premium, however, is not reported as an outright gain. When the bonds are sold at the premium, it means that the investor of or the bond is amenable to receive interest that is somewhat less than the nominal or stated rate of the interest. So in other words, yung ano yung yung uh, yung nagbigay or yung yung bondholder mas mababa lang yung ano niya relative yung ano niya mas mababa yung tatanggapin niya kesa dun sa nominal rate which is yung yung um, which is uh, five based on 5 million yung ano niya yung uh, yung interest na matatanggap niya okay and then uh, so in this case the effective rate is less than the nominal rate of interest so mas maliit yung effective so, mapapansin mo yung uh, nag appear dun sa bonds na ano na rate that is the ano ito yung tinatawag na nominal rate no yung kanilang nakita natin 12% that is the nominal rate no okay and yung effective rate ito yung totoong rate ng bond now pagka premium mas mababa yung effective rate kaysa doon sa nominal rate of interest so the nominal rate of interest that is appearing on the face of the bond certificate it is the interest which the issuing entity periodically pays to the buyer or bondholder. So, base dun sa ano, base dun sa sa interest na yon, yung matatanggap nung nung bondholder. So, because of the relationship the, of the premium to the interest, the bond premium is amortized over the life of the bonds and credited to interest expense. So, ayan. So, ang ano natin, every every periodic whatever it is let's say every 6 months no i ano natin yon or let's say every year no i amortize natin yung bond no well so doon kanina sa premium no na merong uh, 250,000 no assuming that is for 10 years so every year or normally at the end of the year ina amortize natin yung premium so if, if if it's let's say 10 years no so 250,000 divided by divided by divided by 10 so that would be 25,000 pesos yun yung amortization niya so the um, the entry would be debit premium on bonds payable 25,000 and credit interest expense for 25,000 so that's 250,000 divided by divided by 10 years. So normally itong uh, amortization na to ginagawa to at the end of the year, no? So assuming if it's a 10 year period, no, 10 year life so divided by 10. So taon-taon 'yan. Now, mapapansin natin yung premium naka naka-debit siya. 
uh, for 25,000. Di ba kanina naka-credit siya? Kung mapapansin mo, no? If you go back dun sa sa kaninang example, no? Kasi pagka binabawasan natin yung premium, no? Katulad ng pagka yung uh, yung pagka may binabawasan tayo, let's say for example, no? If uh, we have already kung naka-credit yun, ginagawa natin yung kabaliktara, no? Kung normal balance niya is credit in the case of premium, no? So, dinidebit natin siya pagka ina-amortize naman natin siya. Now, sa discount naman, ang normal balance ng discount, which is which is uh, yung, yung issue price mo naman, no? Or yung issue price mo, mas mababa kesa dun sa face amount, no? So, ito naman, ang normal balance ng discount is naka-debit siya. So, pagka ina-amortize natin, kini-credit naman natin siya. No? And then, we um, we recognize an interest expense. So, I give an example on that. So, issuance of bonds at a discount. So, if the sales price of the bonds is less than the face amount of the bonds, these are said to be sold at a discount. No? So, pagka mas mababa yung natanggap kaysa dun sa uh, face amount dun sa binigay. So, example, an entity issued bonds with face amount of 5 million at 95. So, kung mapapansin natin yung kanina, yung at a premium 105, 105, that, that means 105%. So, more than dun sa 100%. No? Ito naman mas mababa. No? So, 95. So, the journal entry for that is debit cash that is um, 5 million times 95%. So, you will have 4,750,000 in credit bonds payable. 5 million. Ayan. Now, yung, yung, yung difference nun, yung balancing figure, no, which is a debit to discount on bonds payable at 250,000 pesos. Ito yung normal balance ng discount on bonds payable. So, parang kabawasan ito dun sa, sa liability na bonds payable. So, naka-minus siya actually. So, the bond discount is the effect a loss to the issuing entity. No, so parang loss to kasi mas maliit yung natanggap nila kaysa dun sa no, kaysa dun sa sa dun sa face amount ng bonds, no? Pero hindi siya tinitreat as an out, outright loss. No, so instead the bonds when the bonds are sold at a discount, it means that the buyer or investor is not willing to accept simply the nominal rate of interest so the buyer wants to accept a rate of interest that is somewhat higher than the nominal rate so pagka mas mataas yung ano yung effective rate dun sa nominal rate dun sa rate na nag appear sa bonds which is the nominal rate it is said to be uh, at a discount so when bonds are issued at a discount the effective rate is higher than the nominal rate so, accounting-wise, the bond discount is amortized as loss over the life of the bonds and charged to interest expense. So, china charge as interest expense. So, yung kanina, yun sa premium, inamortize rin natin yung premium over the life of the bonds, which is 10 years. Ganito rin yung gagawin natin sa, sa bond discount. No? It is amortized also during the life of the bond. So, for example, and this is a given example, 10 years, no? So, 250,000 yung, uh, yung, uh, amor yung uh, bond discount, no? So, i-amortize natin. So, by dividing 10 years or using the straight line method, no? So, 250,000 divided by 10 years, no? So, that would be 25,000. So, yung entry would be debit uh, interest expense, for 225,000 no? so nagre-recognize instead of recognizing a loss we recognize an expense no in the form of interest expense and crediting discount on bonds payable for 25,000 so kung mapapansin mo yung discount on uh, bonds payable sabi ko kanina ang normal balance niyan is debit pero pag ina-amortize natin kinikredit natin
Now, as we see the presentation of uh, discount and premiums uh, financial statement, we see that the discount on bonds payable and premium on bonds payable are reported as adjustments to the bond liability account. No, so it's either naka less siya or naka dagdag siya. Now, in the case of uh, discount, bawas siya. So that's five million divided by uh, less uh, two hundred fifty thousand. So that. So, ang mag appear dun sa non-current liability is 4,750,000. And then, dun naman sa, sa if, it, if the bonds is issued at a premium, dinadagdag siya. So, 5 million plus uh, the premium on bonds payable of 250, so that's 5,250,000. So, the discount on bonds payable is a deduction from the bonds payable. So, this treatment is on the theory that the discount represents the amount that the issuer cannot borrow because of interest differences. Yan. So, hanggang dun lang kasi siya. No? And the premium represents an amount in excess of face amount that the issuer is able to borrow. So, parang ang gain sa kanya yun, no? So, the discount on bonds payable and the premium on bonds payable shall not be considered separate from the bonds payable account. Yan so both so magkasama yan pagka pagka yung pagdating doon sa valuation ng bonds. So both accounts shall be treated consistently as valuation accounts of the bonds payable. So parang mag ano siya yung kumbaga maggani siya. Siya yung uh, kaakibat ng bonds payable. Now pag-usapan naman natin ngayon yung sa yung sa accounting for the interest of bond. Na ko na no na napakainit nung ano nung Amerikana kaya medyo dyan na muna no? So, dalawa yung ano, dalawa yung uh, kailangan tandaan natin dito sa na sa pag-account ng interest ng uh, ng bonds no. Yung interest ito yung binabayaran natin kasi tayo nga may utang eh no? So kaya nagbabayad tayo ng interest no. So, there are two dates no, that uh, we need to account for the interest. No? Number one is yung payment of the interest during the year and yung accrual at the end of the year. Now, yung pagdating naman rin dun sa interest, no, meron ring dalawang dates na, no, na kailangan natin tandaan. It's, a, it's when the bonds are, are issued. Doon sa, na, dun sa, dun sa date of the interest, no? so, in which case, wala kang i-accrue doon once na in-issue sa'yo. And, yung ano, once na in mo, no? And, yung ano, yung isa naman, between interest dates. No? So, pag-usapan muna natin, yung uh, issuance uh, during the interest dates. So, the... The illustration here on March 1, 2020, an entity sold bonds with face amount of 5 million and 12% interest payable semi-annually on March 1 and September 1. So mapapansin natin yung uh, naibenta siya uh, on the interest date on March 1. So in as much as the bonds are sold on March 1, the first payment of interest will be on September 1. So, journal entry of that is debit interest expense, that is 300,000, and credit cash for 300,000. So, this is simply computed by multiplying yung uh, face amount ng bonds of 5 million times 12% times 1 half. Kasi from March 1 to September 1, that's 6 months. So, March, April, May, June, July, August, that's 6 months, no? Okay, so ito yung sinasabi natin kanina, no? So, payment of interest during the year. And then, yung sa December 31 naman, ito naman yung accrual of interest. So, kailangan natin i-accrue kahit hindi pa natin babayaran. Kasi, di ba, yan yung principle sa, no? sa, sa prudence or conservatism. No, we need to accrue once na naglapse na yung time. So, in this, in this case, no? dito naman sa bonds, naglapse na yung uh, time niya between... Uh, September 1 and December 31 so nag accrue na siya for 4 months so that would be uh, debit to interest expense for 
200,000 and credit accrued interest payable. So may payable na tayo na 200,000. So mag appear na yan sa financial statement as of December 31. So yung accrual of interest, no? Um this would be this would be computed as 5 million times 12% which is the the nominal rate of the bond times 4 over 12 so 4 months kasi nakalipas from September 1 to December 31 so that is 200,000 now on uh, 2021 irereverse naman natin yun so that's debit accrued interest payable for 200,000 so so magzi-zero out lang yun yung accrued interest no and then yung interest expense for 200,000 so magzi-zero out lang yung kaninang um record natin on December 31 so nung March 1 naman magbabayad ulit tayo ng interest ayan so eto na yung ano eto na yung semi annual interest payment so debit interest expense for 300,000 and credit cash for 300,000 kasi naglabas tayo ng ng pera so March 1 no kasi nga March 1 sa ka September 1 yung bayaran ng interest and September 1 ganun rin interest expense for 300,000 and cash for 300,000 tapos ganun ulit sa ano sa December 31 no um mag accrue rin tayo no ng uh, ng uh, interest interest payable so by uh, debiting interest expense for 200,000 in crediting accrued interest expense so again the principles of uh, of uh, yung ano yung a is equal to l plus e or the accounting equation di ba pag uh, once na naka-incur na tayo ng ano ng uh, expense no and bine-debit natin siya no because ano yan kumbaga kabawasan niyan sa sa revenue or dun sa income no uh, and then of course uh, ito namang ano ito namang uh, payable no magre-recognize naman tayo ng payable by crediting no kasi ang normal balance ng payable is credit no so credit accrued interest payable for 200,000 so we accrue it no now Para naman doon sa issuance of bonds on interest date no so on June 1 2020 an entity issued bonds with a face amount at uh, of 5 million at 97 pesos ito naman at a discount so the bonds mature in 5 years and pay 12% interest semi annually on June 1 and December 1 Okay, so ganun pa rin, no? Uh, within interest date pa rin yung, ano, so, yung uh, pag-issue. So, the straight line method is used for simplicity, amortizing discount on bonds payable. So, nakatanggap tayo ng cash or debit cash for 4850000 Debit uh, discount on bonds payable. So, that's the difference between the face amount of the bonds of 5 million and the cash proceeds of 4 million. 850,000. So debit discount on bonds payable for 150,000. And then nung sa no dun sa nung December 1 since ito yung unang interest payment so debit interest expense for 300,000 and credit cash for 300,000. And then December 31 mag accrue tayo no kasi December since December 1 yung yung huling bayad no. So debit interest expense for 50,000 that is computed by multiplying 5 million times 12% times 1 over 12 kasi from December 1 to December 31 that's uh, 1 month so that's 50,000 and crediting an a liability in the form of accrued interest payable of 50,000. Now, isa pang entry para doon sa amortization sa December 31 no so um debit interest expense for 17,500 and credit discount on bonds payable so yung amortization ng bond discount is magmula nung June 1 until December 31 kasi ito yung ano ito yung uh, ito yung yung issue date yung original issue date ng company 
So magmula nung June 1 uh, to December 31, that's no, that's uh, that's seven months, no. So 150,000, which is the uh, discount divided by five years using straight line, so that's 30,000. Yung annual amortization niya, pero may fraction of 7 over 12 kasi in-issue siya noong June 1. So, that's only 17,500. So, debit again, interest expense for 17,500 and credit discount on bonds payable. So, the amortization of the bond discount on premium may, may be on interest, every interest date or at end of every year. Yan, so, pwede yun, no? So, in the given example, amortization is made at the end of the year. So, Pwede either na sa, na sa on interest date, no? But typically, end of the year. So, sa 2021 naman, on January 1, we accrued interest payable and uh, debit, uh, accrued interest payable and credit interest expense. So, ito lang yung reverse natin na, no, na, na in-entry natin on December 31, no? Okay, so mag-zero out yun. Pagdating naman ng June 1, ayan, babayad naman ulit, no? So, interest expense for 300,000 and credit um, cash for 300,000. So, that's 5 million times 12%, no? Times one half. Kasi every uh, June and, uh, June 1 and December 1 yung interest payments. Pagdating ng December 1, ganun rin, no? So, okay, so this uh, debit interest expense and credit cash. And for 300,000. And ganun rin yung procedure sa December 31, mag a ulit tayo ng, ng, uh, ng interest, no? Kahit hindi ito yung bayaran ng interest, no? So, debit uh, interest expense, no? Mag-recognize tayo ng expense because uh, the time has already lapsed from June 1 to December 31. So, for 50,000 because this is only for one month. That's 5 million times 12% times 1 over 12. And credit accrued interest payable for 50,000. Now, yung next naman is yung amortization, no? So, buong taon na ito. So, that is 5 million divided by oh, sorry. That's 150,000 which is yung uh, amount on discount on bonds payable divided by 5 years using straight line. So, that's 30,000. So, if a statement is of financial position is prepared on December 31, 2021. The accrued interest payable of 50,000 is classified as a current liability. Ayan. Current liability. Yan yung current portion ng bonds payable. So, bonds payable should be classified as non-current liability. So, that's um, 5 million less discount on bonds payable of 102,500. So, Kaya naging 102,500 yan. So, yung original niya is 150,000 less 175 and less 30,000. So, 102,000 na lang. So, mapapansin natin yung carrying amount lumalaki hanggang sa maging pantay yung carrying amount dun sa bonds payable. Now, we can now proceed dun sa, no, dun sa issuance of bonds between interest date, no? Paano naman kung yung bonds is um, in-issue siya between interest dates? So, on October 1, 2020, an entity issued bonds with face amount of 5 million at 5,228,000 plus accrued interest. So, the bonds are dated January 1. So, may Merong ano yon, merong tatlong buwan na ano na pagitan between January 1 and April 1. So um mature in 5 years and the pay 12% interest semi annually on January 1 and July 1. So to record the issue of bonds which is um which is between interest dates no on on April 1 2020. Yeah, pag sinabing between interest dates. Okay, relax tayo. Medyo ano, baka napapabilis, no? So, relax lang, no? hinahinay lang. Stretching, stretching muna, no? Pati ako pinagpapawisan sa inyo, no? So, 
sabi ko sa inyo, relax lang. No? Madali lang ito mga na ito, itong bands payable na ito. No? Madali ito kung uh, well, makikinig ka ng video ko. Tsaka gagawa ka rin sa sarili mo. No? Because you can only get better when you practice. So pag sinabi lang, ano, issuance between interest dates. No? Ito lang yung ano, yung bang... Uh, yung bang ini-issue mo siya na hindi ano hindi hindi tumatama doon sa ano doon sa date nung nung ano mo nung uh, nung nung interest date mo so in this given example yung interest date kasi nung bad na issue mo is Jan January 1 and July 1 pero binenta yung bonds or ini-issue doon sa ano doon sa sa bondholder doon sa investor nung uh, April 1 so hindi siya tumatama on either of those dates June 1, January 1 or dun sa July 1 so dun sa ano na yun dun sa, dun sa April 1 na yun makaka merong ano yun merong ano accrued interest so an example here to record the issue of the bonds payable on April 1, 2020 so that's debit cash for 5,378,000 and uh, debit uh, credit bonds payable so we always credit bonds payable at face amount which is 5 million and then yung ano niya yes, meron siyang uh, credit premium on bonds payable for 228,000 kasi inisyo siya doon sa ano na yun, yung, fee, yung face amount at 5 million 228 so 5 million 228 less 5 million that is 228,000 so meron siyang ano meron siyang premium kumbaga ito yung natanggap niya no kaysa doon lang sa 5 million so may premium on bonds payable no ito yung sinasabi natin parang gay no pero bukod pa doon meron pang accrued interest yon so bit, uh, kasi nagano siya inish, yung yung uh, interest date niya is January 1 So April 1 niya in issue. So the company computation should be the issue price is 5,228,000. Add lang natin yung accrued interest from January 1, no? Yung accrued interest from January 1 to April 1, 2020, that's 5 million times 12% times 3 over 12. So bakit one uh, bakit 3 over 12 kasi January February, March, that's 3 months. So, may accrued tayo, interest tayo uh, bit, uh, from January 1 to April 1 na 150,000. So, i-add lang natin dun sa, ano, dun sa issue price. So, we have yung total cash receive of 3 million, uh, 5,378,000 with interest expense of 150,000. Yung, yung 150,000 na yan, ito yung nag yung ano yung uh, yung interest from uh, January 1 again January 1 up to April 1 because we issued it between interest dates so so there's an accrued interest involved pagka ganun pagka issued between interest dates so normally when bonds are issued between interest dates the accrued interest is paid by the buyer or the investor So siya rin yung nagbabayad yung investor yung yung pinagbentahan natin ng uh, ng bonds no. So the, the accrued interest on the date of sale for 3 months from January 1 to April 1 is paid by the investor because on Jan July 1 3 months after the sale the investor is going to receive yung buo na okay na yung buo na ng semi annual interest from January 1 to July 1 2020. So kumbaga parang ano lang 'yun para bang uh, ibinawas lang yung ano na 'yon, yung accrued interest na 'yon para buong 6 months na interest yung matanggap niya doon sa ano sa sa July 1 which is 3 months ano 3 months from April 1. So the accrued interest sold is credited to interest expense. Ayan. So parang kabawasan siya doon sa interest expense, no? Instead of uh, saying it's a gain, no? So we uh, we we accrued it sa no, uh, we we credit it sa interest expense. So parang binawasan lang natin yung expense. Okay, so on July 1, 2020, the the journal entry to record the payment 
of semi-annual interest, ito yung dun sa ano, dun sa part again nung ano nung, ba, nung bond issuer o dun sa ano, dun sa debtor no, yung yung nangungutang no. So debit interest expense for 5 for 300,000. So magre-recognize tayo ng interest expense. So that's computed by multiplying 5 million times 12% times 1 half and credit cash for 300,000. So note at this point, the interest expense account is posted. It has a debit balance of 150,000 which represents the correct amount of interest from April 1 to July 1. Ayan. So again, pagdating dun sa ano, sa sa July 1 sa um, so debit interest expense and credit interest payable okay on December 31 yan so mag accrue tayo no so katulad rin ng ginawa natin kanina no so and then uh, another entry for December 31 is the amortization no amortize natin yung sobra na ano yung uh, yung sobrang uh, payment from the from the holder of the bonds so how did we compute this no so moving forward dun sa December 31 which uh, kailangan natin mag uh, mag recognize ng interest no accrual for interest kahit na hindi yun yung interest dates no and also yung amortization no so by uh, a debit to interest expense for 300,000 and credit accrued interest payable and so end of the year natin ginagawa lagi yan no okay so yung interest accrued for 6 months from July 1 to December 31 so, alam na natin pag compute niya no and then yung next is yung ano yung amortization of the premium so by debiting premium on bonds payable. So, kung papansin mo, ang normal balance ng premium is credit, pero pagka ina-amortize natin, din debit natin. So, debit for 36,000 and credit interest expense for 36,000. So, parang binabawasan natin yung interest expense natin for 36,000. Now, how did you, how did we uh, arrive at 36,000? So, yung original life ng bonds, which is 5 years times 12 months, that's 60 months, less yung expired life ng bonds kasi ito yung uh, inissue siya nung April nung April 1 so merong ano yon merong uh, gap yon between January 1 which yung original date ng bond and yung April 1 for 3 months so ililess natin so merong remaining life yung bonds na 57 months and then uh, of course yung monthly amortization which is 228 thousand ito yung total na amortization divided by the remaining months of the bonds no so pwede rin natin i-divide siya by the remaining months or the remaining life of the bond no which is 57 months so monthly meron siyang amortization of 4000 now 4000 magmula nung April 1 hanggang December 31 no ito na yung naglapse i-multiply lang natin by 9 months no kasi april between from april 1 to december 31 that's 9 months so 4000 times 9 months that would be 36000 so the straight line method is used in amortizing the premium on bonds payable so if a financial statement is uh, issued no uh, the financial position is prepared on uh, december 31 2020 the accrued interest payable of 300,000 is classified as a current liability. So, ito yung current portion ng liability ng bonds. Ayan. Kasi magjuju na siya. No? Itong ano na to, itong uh, yung, uh, yung 300,000 na to. Yung accrued interest payable. And yung sa ano naman, sa bonds payable should be classified, no? Like we said, isasama natin yung yung either discount or yung premium dun sa computation ng bonds payable. So, in this given example, meron siyang premium ng bonds payable, no? i-add natin dun sa bonds payable na 5 million. So, that would be 
5,192,000. Pero so, so, how did we arrive at 192,000 premium bonds payable? So, simple lang yan, no? Ito yung, ano, ito yung, uh, ang original amount niya is 228,000 less 36,000, you will get 192,000. So, ito yung i-add natin dun sa bonds payable. So, we have a carrying amount of 5,192,000 na mag appear ito dun sa, sa non-current portion ng liabilities. So, natapos rin, no? Oh, pinagpawisan ako doon. No, so, if you have any questions, so mag-ano ka lang, no? So, i-ano mo lang, i-comment mo lang yan. If, and of course, subscribe, no? If you haven't subscribed yet, and of course, share, no? Kung if you find this, uh, this uh, information valuable, no? tell it to, to your friends, no? And of course, like. Um, stay safe, God bless, and keep your hands clean.